Hey everybody, what's up? It's Rob. We are back at the Progressive Web App Summit. I am joined by the one and only Surma. Uh, Surma, you just gave a talk on HTTP 2. It's a great word. It's a great word. It's, I always mess it up. Um, so I'm wondering, for I, I'm not like a super networking pro. Can you tell me what is sort of the, the difference between HTTP and HTTP 2? So first of all, you can call it H2 because uh, that is the official symbol, which makes it much, yes. much easier to say. Um, there's two sides to it, so that most importantly, there is no big difference in terms of how the semantics of the protocol works. So all the web apps remain working the same. It's still request response, you still have the verbs, you have headers and the payload. So all of that stays the same. The only thing that is actually different is how it goes over the wire. So um, instead of having at most six connections and each connection can only handle one, which was the case in H1, you can now ha only have one connection, but each of these individual streams, as they're called, can utilize this one connection to the fullest. So, so you don't have this head of line blocking issue anymore where you have to wait for a response to come in before you can send out the next request. So that means that things like bundling your JavaScript together uh, or spriting your images are essentially counterproductive in HTTP2. So stop doing that. OK, and, and, and for particularly for progressive web apps, is, is, did we get something? Is there a cool benefit of using H2 for, for a PWA? Well, apart from what I just said, there is also the, uh, when you don't do bundling anymore, you get better caching, because you can cache all the files individually, because you don't do concatenation anymore, which means that apps tend to load faster. And then there's a new feature in HP2 called push, which allows you to push resources towards the client that the client hasn't even requested yet. So when someone wants to have your index HTML, you pretty much know that they're going to request your JavaScript in your CSS as well. So you can just put that to, into their cache without them asking for it. And by the time the browser knows it needs it, it's already there. So that will basically make your app even more snappier and get it on screen so much faster. Nice, nice. OK. now. I'm I'm sold. That sounds awesome. I'm wondering, are are there any 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 tools or like how to? What is a good way for me to get started with with H2? Is there? Well, I wrote a tool called Simple HTTP2 Server. Which, if you know Python, there is the Simple HTTP Server, which basically serves the current directory. And I rewrote it in Go. So, and I chose Go because I wanted to have it on Windows, macOS, and Linux alike. And it uses HTTP2, obviously. Um, for HTTP2, you do need TLS, which can be very tedious. And that is why I wrote this tool, because it generates that certificate for you. So you don't have to do it. It also has support for push, so you can actually just start it up and see what the impact on your app is when you switch to HTTP2, which I think is really helpful. Cool. All right, so we will include a link to the, the fancy server, the simple Go server for H2 down in the description. Uh, also, uh, links to Surma's talks and all the other talks from the Progressive Web App Summit are available on the playlist. Surma, thank you so much for, for being with us today. Uh, I'm Rob Dodson from beautiful Amsterdam uh, here at the PWA Summit signing off.